You know, there's been so much confusion and chaos in Afghanistan the past few weeks, and with so many Afghan refugees making it here to the U.S., what happens now? Well, this morning, law expert Jamie Wright is sharing her insight and her legal perspective for those in the U.S. that are taking in Afghans. Thanks so much for joining us, Jamie. Thank you so much for your time this morning. So what do we know about uh, the Afghanistan uh, resettlement here, these Afghans coming here? What is that process going to look like? So there is a formal process that the State Department has. It's called a um, level two resettlement program where Afghanistan um, refugees who used to work for either media or NGO and or U.S. contractors have a formal program that they can come here and resettle. There is an informal process, however, for those who were able to get on the plane and leave the airport who didn't have identification, who are currently stationed at airports in Wisconsin, for instance, at a military airport. So there's a formal one and an informal one. What are we doing to, to make sure we know who these people are and what their background is and um, how, that, how that correlates to where they will be sent and who they will be with? So let's talk about the informal one. For the informal one, I'm really not sure. There's really no clear way to identify individuals who just happened to get on a plane who were hustling to get out of there, right? For the former one, they do have identification. The state process is going to do a background check, it's screening because the documents are readily available because they used to work for NGOs, they used to be U.S. contractors. And then from there, those who are in the formal program are going to go through the highly vetted nonprofits and then entities like Airbnb who are allowing people to take in refugees. Yeah, let's talk about that. Airbnb CEO announced this the other day, Brian Chesky. He said, look, we're going to open up uh, housing for 20,000 Afghan refugees. Um, that's a that's a, that's a big help, but how how is that process all going to work? Well, it's, it's a complicated one, but they are going to have to work with the State Department in order to do that, in order to do the background checks and the screening, because I'm not sure that Airbnb has all the technology and all the resources and information in order to find out exactly who each of these people are. But there is going to be a highly vetted process through the State Department that's going to work in conjunction with the CIA and the FBI to vet those who do come in through their program. And it's not just housing. I mean, these are people that are going to need other programs to step in and help, right? Yes. What are some of these other organizations that are going to be helping out? Yeah, they, so the first thing I want to tell people is that when it is a nonprofit that is going to be helping out, you should always make sure that they have um, a background check themselves. I know the San Diego Tribune and the Los Angeles Times recommended some nonprofits that have been highly vetted that do this type of work. They're going to be offering them, for instance, they are definitely going to have COVID testing. They are going to be having um, vaccinations, immunizations. They're going to be provided support, legal support, probably through some of the local um, legal aids. They're going to be provided certain government benefits so they can get food, um, so they can pay for certain um, benefits like um, health care and dental care and vision care. San Diegans really step up when people are in need, and we, and we love that about this town. Um, a lot of people yeah. want to help these refugees, um, but so many of us just don't know where to start, right? I mean, what, what is your kind of advice there? Well, first of all, go through a nonprofit. Uh, the San Diego Tribune has made a list of recommendations, and I read those recommendations, and I actually think they're very good. Uh, if you don't read the San Diego Tribune, you have a personal um, gripe about the San Diego Tribune, I would suggest the LA Times. They've also made a recommendation about some nonprofits that are going to be providing support. Then the other thing is, is you can probably go to the State Department and see if they have any recommendations. Um, the state of California also may have some recommendations on their website. And then you may just want to do a Google search to say, you know, vetted nonprofit support for Afghans and see what comes up. Jamie Wright, I always appreciate your time, and I know you share a lot of your insight and your advice on your social pages as well. Where can people uh, get more information on your services and some of your expertise? On Twitter, I'm Jamie Wright, or Jamie E. Wright, ESQ, and also on Instagram at Jamie Wright, ESQ. Jamie, really appreciate your time this morning. Have a great Thank day. Thank you so much.